Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel Service in Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Protest by members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria at the National Assembly turns violent. Police say nine of their personnel injured, two of them shot, allegedly, by the protesters. Thirteen more witnesses called by the PDP candidate, Atiku Abubakar, Certify at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal say President Buhari's election did not comply with electoral laws. Circumstances surrounding the death of a Nigerian lady in a hotel in South Africa get more complex as family members say they suspect foul play. And Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam, confirms controversial bill allowing extradition to the Chinese mainland is dead. For more information on our top stories and others, please just visit our website, it's channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channels web has videos of all our shows. Subscribe and watch Channels Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature, so you can use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and follow the instructions. We're talking about pictures, our first video is from the Long Bridge on the Lagos Ibado Expressway, showing a gridlock which reportedly lasted for several minutes. Uh, eyewitness reports how he had to disembark from a commercial bus he boarded and walk the distance. He blames the traffic situation on the rehabilitation of the road by a construction company. Now our next image is from a long ring road in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, and it shows the road taken over by flood, which our eyewitness says happened after a rainfall that lasted five minutes. He laments how some residents had to wade through the water or find ways of using the road without walking through the water. And he's asking the state government to do something about this. And our final image is from the summit junction in Asaba Delta State, showing the poor state of this road again. Our eyewitness reporter says that the road is a nightmare to the residents and is asking the state government to intervene. Thank you for sending those images but please note that you can send in reports happening around you and videos as well but remember to mention where those images and videos are coming from. The 2019 inequality report by a United Kingdom based non-governmental organization Oxfam has ranked Nigeria low on gender equality and poverty eradication. The report ranks Nigeria 125 out of 145 countries on gender inequality it also notes that 69% of Nigerians live below the poverty line. While affirming the nation's economic growth in the last six years, the report describes it as a paradox because it does not reflect on the living standards of the people. Everywhere, Oxfam releases global reports on inequality index in order to measure the effects of government's policies on the citizens ensuring gender equality and poverty eradication. I would like to read up. Presenting the 2019 regional report in Abuja, Oxfam's country director highlights a staggering gap between the rich and the poor, as an estimated 69% of Nigeria's population live below poverty line. The report also ranks Nigeria 125th out of 145 countries on gender inequality. The paradox of growth in Nigeria is that as the country gets richer, more than half of its 200 million strong population continue to live in abject poverty. 69% of Nigerians are living below the poverty line. The report also revealed that Nigeria ranks 125 out of 145 countries on the Gender Inequality Index. A similar report by Oxfam in 2018 shows that 64% of Nigeria's estimated 160 million people were living on less than one dollar per day. And in many of the countries... Oxfam also highlights some of the possible reasons why the situation has refused to improve. Quite a lot of people 
who need um, the social intervention, it's not reaching them um, because it's been kind of captured by quite a number. So, so the point is that one is that the wrong targeting, and two also the the capture, and the third one is just the fact that essentially it doesn't get to the people who need it most, and therefore you can't really have the the sort of impact you would see. We have the policies and we have the program. But what remains to be checked is to have a proper review mechanism in place to see whether effectively these people are being reached, to create avenues for the people, the targeted people, to have a say. As part of its recommendations, Oxfam urges the Nigerian yeah. government to critically re-examine its policies culture of governance and make deliberate efforts to break the concentration of wealth in the hands of the elites. This recommendation perhaps needs urgent attention in order to improve on the current economic inequality index. Now let's get more insight into this report and what it means for Nigeria. We're being joined live from our Abuja studio by a research partner for that report, and the Chief Executive Officer of Connected Development, Mr. Hamza Lawal, it's a pleasure having you with us on the News at 10. Thank you for having me. The report calls the country low in gender equality. Could you throw light on how Oxfam arrived at that conclusion? Um, if you look at the data we gathered from about 15 countries in the West African region, uh, countries like Dakar is doing very well in terms of empowering women. If you look at the statistics in Nigeria, if you are from a poor home, it's more likely that you would never see the four walls of a classroom. If you're in a rural community, it's more likely that you will be married out as a teenager or as a girl. So, so when we compare the data we gathered from Nigeria, Ghana, and other West African countries, Nigeria is on that break. Uh, uh, not doing well in terms of gender inequality. Uh, the report also shows that economic growth over the past few years has not impacted on the people, but it states that 69% now live below the poverty line. It used to be 70%. So does that indicate a positive change, at least a slight change? So the past two decades, Nigeria has been on that pathway on economic growth. Uh, but Again, this economic growth have not fostered prosperity, and citizens have not enjoyed those growth. Nigeria have generated a mass wealth from the extractive industry. But then if you look at this wealth, only 1% of our 100% population controls this wealth, a wealth that is equal to our 2017 budget. Over $27 billion is being controlled by just 1% of our population. This wealth is not trickling down to the ordinary people and even people at the grassroots. As much as we make uh, economic growth uh, over two decades, this growth does not mean impact on the ground. People cannot access uh, health care services. People cannot even send their children to school. Communities don't have access to drinking water. So then again, how can you grow or prosper when your citizens are living below poverty line or paying uh, health bills out of pocket? So Mr. Lawal, let's... My final question now, going forward, what should be done to ensure growth in the economy trickles down to the people? Uh, first, we need stronger policy and regulatory framework. Uh, we know that the Nigerian government has set aside 500 billion uh, social investment. We need to see more concrete action and increase investment. But beyond that, we need to also strengthen uh, uh, transparency and accountability framework on how these funds are being utilized. But most importantly, we need to ensure that uh, our budget works for the needs and aspiration of the Nigerian people. Because the more we uh, encourage inequality gap, the more we would enjoy social vices in, in this system and the country at large. Mr. Hamza Lawa, it was a pleasure having you with us on the News at 10. To security issues now, gunmen have attacked four villages in Arena community of Shiroro local government area in Niger state, reportedly killing five people and injuring several others. A resident of the community, that's Mr. Yahuza Arana, who confirmed the attack to Channel Television, said the raids took place between Monday and the early hours of today. According to him, over 50 gunmen attacked the villages one after the other and rustled about 130 cattle while cutting away farm produce, money, and other valuables. When contacted, 
The police public relations officer in the state, DSP Abubakar Danina, confirmed the incident, saying the police are aware of the attacks but could not confirm the casualty figures, saying details of the attack are still sketchy. He also blamed the bad terrain as a major challenge to security operations in the area. Now let's go back to our Abuja studios, where Malpe is standing by with more stories. Hello, Malpe. Hello, Melinda. It's good to see you. Now, well, at the National Assembly, where the Senate wants the relevant laws to be amended to reflect the heaviest punishments for rapists, especially cases involving minors, in order to serve as a deterrent, Senator Rose Oko raised the motion on the alarming rate of rape of minors as a matter of urgent public importance. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports that the Senate is also worried about the rate of suicide in the country. Federal lawmakers in the upper chamber of the National Assembly arrive for the first plenary of the week. As they settle down, there are four motions listed on the order paper. But first, there is a matter of urgent public importance on the alarming rate of rape involving minors. The Senate is worried that authorities have been accused of treating child molesters with levity. Direct the committees listed above to review the relevant legislations with a view to providing stiffer penalties against sexual abuse on infants and minors especially. If a man commits... In contributing to the debate, some lawmakers question the capacity of the police to handle rape cases. That person, I am sure, ought even to be killed, not to be sentenced. When an abuse of such nature takes place, those who are affected, if it's a minor, let the parent report, report the matter to the police. And if they can, write to the Senate. The daughter of a megat was raped by the principal. And when we got to the police station in Kaduna, what the DPO told us was, huh? Uh, not just rape? Nigeria adopted the Child Rights Act in 2003 to domesticate the International Convention on the Rights of the Child. But about 11 northern states in Nigeria are yet to pass the child rights law. Part of the Senate's resolution is to review the relevant laws for stiffer penalties for rapists. Arise to move. Another worry for the senators is the rate of suicides in the country. The government religious institutions and other relevant corporate bodies have not addressed the ugly situation in the country and the situation may continue if not properly addressed. Most Nigerians are not happy. Allow me in the next time to present a proper motion on the urgent need to establish the Department of Happiness. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, recently ordered the withdrawal of the popular insecticide Sniper from the open market, seen as it was easily accessible by people intent on committing suicide. The senators, however, want it removed completely from circulation. The Senate also wants the federal government, through the Ministry of Education, to ensure mandatory counseling departments in schools to enable students who feel depressed speak with someone qualified. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. When the News at 10 returns, the African Development Bank challenges federal government on tackling the country's infrastructure deficit through investment. That's on Business News. Do join us.